As you might have heard, this session is being recorded and it will be made available uh, to people who were able to join today and uh, who sits in a unsociable time zone at, the, at this moment. So as most of you know, the Hack and Learn is part of the Indigo initiative. So I'm welcoming you to Indigo as well. And is hosted here at the GoLab at the University of Oxford. Indigo is a data and a learning community of peers. I will uh, shortly hand to Juliana to tell you a little bit uh, more of Indigo and uh, of the Hack and Learn in particular. But I just want to um, share that we do data and a lot of learning to improve how to share data and learn from data, generate insights on how we can better achieve social outcomes and address complex social problems. The meeting is, as I said, recorded, is online. We are here on Zoom. Uh, please tell us in the chat, where are you calling from? Usually we have people from all over the world joining our Hack and Learn. Keep yourself muted unless uh, you're given the microphone and you're intervening with the questions or with comments. And if you can make sure we can read your name on your uh, Zoom pictures, um, we want to know who you are and uh, we want to address, uh, we want everybody to know who is in the room. So what's happening today, here is a slide. This slide has uh, this uh, lovely bird, which we discover is an indigo bunting. And uh, is our mascot for today that reminds us also, please feel free to tweet and LinkedIn and uh, disseminate the information about Hack and Learn through your social media. The aim of today is to launch the Hack and Learn. So in the next hour, there will be an introduction of what a Hack and Learn event is for those of you that did not take, play, uh, take part to a Hack and Learn event uh, before. We have some challenges that you can take part in. And so today is the opportunity for our challenge leader to pitch to you and persuade you to join their challenge as the most uh, enthusiastic team member, the most interesting challenge ever existed in the Hack and Learn history. We will uh, give chances to uh, ask questions at the end of, uh, of our session, but we will also give you an overview on how operational you can join. We tend to use Slack because uh, people join at different time in different, uh, at different days. And uh, we will give you a brief introduction on how you get on a challenge and the type of support that you receive. So I'll stop here and I'll hand over to Juliana. Oh, no, first, I want to welcome, sorry, sorry. I want to welcome our co-host, um, Georgie. Today is a particularly um, special I can learn because we not only co-hosted with Inspire Matrices, we've been co-hosting Hack and Learn before with Inspire Matrices, but I want to announce that we are starting, we have started a formal collaboration with Inspire Matrices to see a network of global, a global network of data stewards. And uh, Georgie, who is here with us today and is uh, um, co-hosting the event, is, our data steward based at the Inspermetrices in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So I'll pass the word to you before we go to Juliana, um, Georgie. Can you introduce yourself and Inspermetrices as our partner? And I want to thank the Chief Investment Fund Foundation to make this collaboration possible through financial support. Georgie. Thank you very much, Mara, for the introduction. Hi. Hi everyone, my name is George and I'm a researcher at, it, at Inspire Matrices and now a data steward at GoLab in Latin America. So talking a little bit about Inspire, Inspire is an independent and no-profit institution located in Sao Paulo State in Brazil. And it's dedicated to education and research in the fields of business administration, economics, law and engineering. Uh, so in the last years, we have been working on the subject of outcome-based contracting. And 
Recently, we started working together with the Go Lab in some activities and including the Hack and Learn. So we already worked together in past Hack and Learns and we had very interesting results. So we hope we do it again. So we are very happy to co-host this event again. So thank you, Mara and Juliana for the invitation and congratulations for the initiative. So I hope we all have a good time and enjoy the event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Georgie. Uh, Juliana, over to you. Yes, thank you, Mara. Uh, so first of all, I want to say welcome to everybody who are really, really excited to, to have you all here today. Our Hack and, Hack and Learn event is part of our Indigo initiative, which is our initiative around better data for better social outcomes. Here, we believe that if we collect and if we, if we gather more data, uh, that will help practitioners and researchers to generate more insights and more knowledge. And those insights will help uh, practitioners and policymakers to design better programs and to generate better social outcomes. So in that spirit, our Hack and Learn is part of this bigger Indigo initiative. Can we go to the next slide, please? Our Hack and Learn has four phases. So the first one is the kickoff session, which is happening here today. Um, you will hear a group of challenge leaders pitching their challenges and trying to convince you to join their challenge. And you will then join a Slack group with the challenge that you, that you pick or you decide. And you will have two weeks to work with that group of people. After those two weeks, we will get together here again on the 23rd of September, and we will have what we call a show and tell session. The show and tell session is an opportunity for us to get together to show the final results of our work, to show our final outputs. And it's also an opportunity to see what the other teams have been up to. There will also be a panel of experts providing feedback on our work. Uh, the panel of experts um, will have Carolina Melo from Brazil. She's a postdoctoral researcher at the Brazilian Institute for Early Childhood Development. And we'll have Milena Castelnou, who is the chief program officers at the Education Outcomes Fund. So they, they really know what they are doing and they will be here to provide feedback on our work. But this is not all. After that, we invite you all to co-author a blog with us. We are going to publish this blog at the Oxford Government Outcomes blog. And the blog is about the learnings and lessons coming from the Hack and Learn. And it's also an opportunity to say, this is what we could do in two weeks, but if we keep working on this, we can do more and this is the way to go in the future. And we will discuss and share this uh, blog post uh, on the 17th of November, which is our final Indigo peer learning session from the year 2022. So as you can see, this has many phases and we invite you to be part of all of them. Next slide, please. What I want to do is give some tips for the ones who are participating in this type of events for the first time. So the first thing that I want to say is that you should choose one challenge as your primary challenge. I know that all the challenges are very interesting, that all the challenges are very relevant, but sometimes you join all the challenges because you want to be part of the discussion, but you end up having so much work to do that is very frustrating because you will realize that you don't have enough time to work for all the challenges that you wanted to work. So the idea here is that you can join all the challenges if you want to be aware of the conversation, but make sure that you have a primary one and let your challenge leader know that that's the primary challenge that you're picking. Of course, your, your challenge leader is your main point of help. If you need any help with Slack, if you need any help with the work, if you need any help or have questions or doubts with the task, you should feel free to ask him or her the questions that you want. And for this show and tell session happening uh, on the 23rd of September, you will get 10 minutes. Every group will get 10 minutes to show your results. We really don't expect you to have a final solution for such a complex problem, but just an idea of potential ways on how to address them, maybe something in a beta version or maybe a prototype, but we really are not expecting a final product here. And even if you don't have a final product, but you learn something along the way, just showing the lessons and the learning that will be enough for us. The focus of this Hack and Learn is on the learning part, of course, so that should be enough. And while you are working, it is advisable that you write down some ideas or opinions about your experience, because then you will be 
uh, you will be part of the blog and whenever you have to write something it's easier to start writing if you have something from before um, it's very difficult when you have to start writing and you're starting from scratch so i would really recommend you to get some notes while you are developing the work and that's it on my side i don't want to take more time we have lots of things to discuss today so i think it's back to mara thank you juliana uh, we are circulating the slides also uh, so you don't have to take frantic notes you will have them in your inbox and we also post the video so you can revisit what we've been saying today uh, before we move to our challenge there are other special guests i would like to introduce to you today who are james and nelima who will be our technical support during the Hack and Learn. James or Nelima or both of you, do you want to jump in and tell us the type of support you offer and maybe some highlights from past Hack and Learns? Uh, hello, uh, so I'm James up in uh, Edinburgh in Scotland uh, with Open Data Services uh, Workers Co-op. We've been working on the Indigo project for a few years. Uh, and I'm here, well, we're here to help with getting uh, or using Indigo data. Uh, I'm also here to help any tech issues um, the teams have to sort of, uh, sort of show the ideas and show what we're working on. Um, and it's been uh, so I'm in I'm in all the Slack channels, so I'll I'll see people on Slack and you can reach out there. And uh, yeah, it's been really good seeing sort of different ideas that we worked on over the previous events. I'm looking forward to seeing people do this time. Nelima, can we see you? So we attach a name to a face because you will become an avatar from later today. Thanks, Mara. Uh, yes, so this is my first hack and learn and uh, I'm very excited to see what new things everyone comes up with. We've had a look at the previous uh, hack and learns and beautiful visualizations and the learnings that everyone's shared. So I'm very excited to work with James and you'll see me in the Slack channels as well. Fantastic. So this is the team behind the scene. I have to say that it's beautiful to see um, people participating in the channel, channel uh, challenge, coming up with an idea, and then the team goes away and comes back and it's like, oh, do you mean something like this? And there are these beautiful graphs and maybe they're not perfect. Oh, maybe this is what you mean. And it happens there and then. So it's really, really exciting to see ideas taking shape in prototypes and um, Got, getting ideas from our website and our ways to use data usefully. But with no further ado, I now launch us into the presentation of our challenges. I have three challenges to uh, present and uh, each challenge leader has five minutes to give you a highlight, an overview of what the challenge is about and uh, explain what they would like to achieve by the end of these two weeks. So we have a hack team, the numbers are 24, 25, 26 because we had a number of hack and learn before and we never delete the learning from previous hack and learn. So when you join Slack, you can sneak look at things that happened in the past and build on what they have done. The first, Hack and Learn challenge that we are presenting today is the Ipabon dataset spreadsheet. And uh, Juliana is pitching this challenge to you. Juliana. Great. So um, I am going to be pitching my idea on rethinking the Impact Bond dataset spreadsheet. If we go to the next slide. I will introduce you to our Impact Bond data set. I'm sure that most of you already are familiar with it, but just in case, this is how our Impact Bond data set looks like. We have some maps, we have some key figures, we have a list of filters that you can play around, and then we have some other buttons to share data and download data with our Indigo community. Next slide, please. I don't have more time to explain more how the Impact Bond data set works, but if you join this challenge, I will explain in detail how you can use all these features. One key part of our Impact Bond data set is our Impact Bond spreadsheet or our template. This is, this is our tool to collect data on different type of Impact Bond projects. If you want to have a look at the whole spreadsheet, I will share a link here in the chat so you can download the whole spreadsheet from the GoLab library of resources. Um, but I, I can share some screenshots so you get an idea today. 
we have a first tab on general overview where we have the very basic variables on Infocom projects, such as dates, uh, some key figures on investment, the type of project, the type of intervention, et cetera, et cetera. Next slide. We also have a, another um, tab for particular organizations. We have a tab to have a list of all the investors. We also have a tab for the outcome payers, another tab for the service providers. Next slide. We have a um, different set of tabs for outcome metrics where you can say which are the outcome metrics um, and which are the targets. And finally, we have this one, which is um, another tab for outcome pricing. And you can say how much was paid per outcome achieved. One more thing that we have, and it's a key part of our uh, Imperbot data set is the data dictionary. We have a collection of data definitions and they all live here in this data dictionary and I will share a link later. Every variable that you find in this spreadsheet should have a data definition here. Next slide, please. So our challenge is about rethinking and improving this big spreadsheet that I will share with you. Um, we want to make this spreadsheet easy to use, simple, and able to collect data on any type of Imperbon projects. And our spreadsheet should also adapt to the different data needs of different projects. Imperbons could look very different, one from each other. They all share the same model or the same basic idea, but they look very different. Some of them uh, are bigger than others. Some of them are working with different complex needs. They could look very different. So our idea is to have a simple, uniform, um, a simple spreadsheet that could collect data on all of them. And this is our work, work plan. Next slide, please. Together with a group of practitioners, we will review every tab of the spreadsheet. We were going to go through all of them and we're going to see which are the tabs that need more fixing than others. We will have conversations about different aspects of Imperpon projects that we are not collecting data on yet. So for example, we don't have any variables to measure the cost of these projects. And we are going to develop a set of variables um, to start measuring these myth missing aspects. And we will think and create the data definitions that are missing. So for example, we don't have data definitions for the roles of organizations. Sometimes we assume that we all share the same definition, but maybe that's not what is happening. So we want to have explicit and key data definitions for the role of different organizations. This is a key conversation to have with practitioners. So if you are working in the field of impact bonds or outcome-based contracts, uh, we would welcome very much your help here. And this is a uh, hack team number 24. I will share with you later the Slack link so you can share my channel. If you have any questions, you can post them here in the chat or this is my email if you just prefer to send me an email. And I think it's back to Mara now. Thank you, Juliana. Can you also put your email in the chat so that people can uh, uh, reach you there? Thank you, Juliana. So this is a challenge Hack Team 24. And uh, we are now moving to challenge number 25. And uh, I'm handing over the word to Georgi. He's uh, planning to build a dashboard of outcome-based contract. This is not social impact bond only. This is outcome-based contract. Georgi. Hi everyone again. So uh, I'm here to invite you all to join to challenge 25. So next slide, please. Uh, what's the main idea here? Uh, first, a uh, quick explanation about outcomes-based contracting. In general, traditional forms of contracting, public service, pay for inputs or activities, but in general is not that point that contractors want to see. Contractors generally want to see improvements in social issues or they want to improve uh, the quality of life of the people. So generally, they want to see uh, outcomes. They uh, want to see improvements in activity and social outcomes. So one way to link the payment to outcomes is use outcome-based contracting. So that's the general idea here. Uh, so, but um, given the importance of this kind of contracts, do we have data on that? And the answer is yes, we do. So we have the INSPIR metrics database with almost 400 contracts and the contracts were spread from 
more than 70 countries. So next slide, please. Uh, despite of having data, we still do not have a good visualization to that. So we also would like to work on that. So maybe you could join us and help us in this point. So this challenge, basically what we're going to do is try to answer questions based on the Inspermatics Outcome-Based Contract database. So generating a better visualization. So that's the challenge. Next, please. And how we're going to do, we're going to use uh, Google Data Steward Studio to construct a dashboard based on the Inspermatics OBC database. So that's, that's the main challenge here. So next, please. Uh, just to have an idea, a better idea about what I'm, I'm talking about, here is one kind of visualization that is possible to generate based on uh, our spreadsheet. So, and we have here in the right-hand side, some talks that we could uh, address basically based on the database. So please join us and next please. And here is another example of what we can do based on our database. So if you got interested in, please join us next in challenge 25. So we hope you can join us and let's hack and learn. Thank you very much. Thank you, Georgie. So challenge number 25, on the dashboard. We now move to our next challenge, challenge number 26. And we have Harry and uh, Rick who prepared this uh, challenge on outcome-based approaches to education, how to get the evidence to policymaker. Okay, thanks Mara and hello everyone. Uh, very pleased to be joining my first Hack and Learn here. And together with my colleague Sri, we're going to be leading on this challenge. So I'm gonna give you an overview of the challenge. And I hope to make it as evident to you, as it already is to me, that there is only one challenge to join <laughs> this summer, Hack and Learn, and it's challenge 26. So next slide, please. So the data we're going to be using is based on the systematic review of outcomes contracts, which we've been working on here at the GoLab for the last 18 months and more. So this is a very rigorous form of literature review. You can see here in the brief overview of the method that having searched in multiple databases, we gather the thousands of results, and then through a process of screening and assessment, we narrow that down to a core of published reports and studies that represent the forefront of our collective knowledge on outcomes-based contracts. And these are the studies from which we can extract the data and synthesize the findings. So our focus for this challenge is on those that deal with education. So we've got 43 studies, and within those studies, 307 individual outcomes contracts dealing with education. Uh, a review of this scale has never been done. So this really is cutting edge uh, work that we've been doing. And uh, so next slide, please. So we've got all this data, we've got it in these big spreadsheets, but then the question then becomes about how to make the information useful and accessible to policymakers and practitioners because if we don't get the data into a format that policymakers can use and that is amenable to the, their way of working, then we're really not achieving one of the key aims of the systematic review. Uh, and, we, and we really want to, to emphasize the purpose in terms of the utility of this for policy. So next slide, please. So one of the ways we've done this, of course, is the traditional way of writing a report. This, this was published earlier in the year for the World Bank, um, but there's still so much more that we can get out of this data set. This is really only scratching the surface. Uh, so next slide, please. So that's where you all come in. So the vision for the Hack and Learn is uh, to begin designing a data visualization tool with this data so to make it easy to navigate showing the nature and coverage of the evidence base so that the policy and practice audience know what information is out there for them to draw on 
We can also begin to draw out some key insights from across that evidence base and crucially make them accessible. So they're not hidden away, dispersed in different locations, but front and center in one location. And finally, of course, by gathering this data and finding out what we do know, it also reveals to us what we don't know. So gaps in the knowledge are going to, to come to light through this process. Uh, and based on that understanding of the evidence, this is going to shape future research because it shows us where we then need to direct our collective efforts as researchers. So next slide, please. So yeah, join us on this challenge. This is a truly global data set. We've got data on projects in Canada to Colombia and from Bangladesh to Belgium. We know there's a policy audience out there that's hungry for these insights. Uh, and we know that it can shape educational policy. So I have no doubt, there's simply no question in my mind that every right thinking person among you is going to join challenge 26. So back to you, Mara. <laughs> Thank you, Harry. Thank you for your passionate speech. And, uh... Uh, before we, um, I open up uh, a discussion on how to join and Zoom will help us, we always invite our community to suggest uh, any challenge they would like to add to our list. This is a list that we prepared over the summer, reaching out to the community. But if there is, a, do we have any other challenge that we want to propose to our community for this edition of the Hack and Learn? Hey, Mara, I would like to propose a challenge. Hello, I think this is uh, Ishani. Yes. Who I think reached out to our uh, team uh, a couple of days ago. But if there are other challenge in the room, please uh, uh, contact us and raise uh, your hand and, and propose an idea. So this is uh, your chance, Ishani, to tell us yeah. what you would like us to work on for the next weekend with you. Thanks a lot, Mara. And hello, everyone. Really glad to be part of the Hack and Loan Challenge. My name is Ishani, and I belong to this organization called Impact Wars. So with this, I introduce to you challenge number 27 with a drum roll, which is making structuring of impact bonds simple, easy, and quick. Can you please move to the next slide? would like to talk a bit about what Impact Wars does. So we are a social enterprise and we are working towards capacity building of small nonprofits in India and would like to throw some light on a problem statement now. So these nonprofits have very less, very less access to commercial capital and it's very difficult for them to raise funds. But let's not forget that they are creating meaningful local outcomes, which makes them eligible for outcome-based contracts. But again, there's a bottleneck. The outcome-based contracts are difficult to structure. They are expensive. They are time-consuming. And you know they're complex to understand, which leads us to our challenge, which we are about to solve in the next two weeks, which is to make impact bond structuring easy, simple, and quick, and also cost-effective by creating a simple step-by-step -step workflow. So let's see how we are, how we'll do it. And you know, uh, don't worry, we have a plan. So let's move to the next slide. Okay. So the team will be working on first understanding and studying the impact bond uh, life cycle stages, which are available on the Oxford Go Labs website. Post that, uh, the team would work on creating data requirements for each lifestyle stages through uh, Excel frameworks and other methods as well. And eventually, all of all the whole team will be working towards creating a minimum viable product, which will contain a fun and interactive workflow to structure these impact bonds. And finally will be the show and tell session before which we will be showcasing the MVP, which is the minimum viable products to stakeholders in UK, India, to get a sense of whether what we are building is making sense or not. And uh, that's about it. I welcome all of you who are interested to join the challenge. And I don't think there's any need to think there's any, uh, you should take some time to think about it. You should just join it because this is path breaking work. So yeah, going on the lines of Harry, please join this session. Thanks a lot. And I'll be sharing the Slack channel and also a sheet where you can update your names and also check out the work plan for the next two weeks. So thank you. Thank you, Ishani. So um four challenges 
if somebody has a burning uh, idea that is ready to be launched, please reach out immediately or think about proposing a, a challenge for the next Suck and Learn. We run one every six months, two editions a year. So uh, there, are, we, there are plenty of opportunity to set the right moment when your idea is at the right um, maturity level to be um, brainstormed with our community. I'll uh, pause a second to uh, ask questions on the challenge. Um, I think we can give a few minutes. There is a, in the chat I saw a question from uh, Elrica, who was uh, she found similarities between the second and the third challenge. So this is the challenge on the visualization on outcome-based contracts proposed by Georgie, and the some of visualization to put evidence in the hands of policymaker proposed by Harry. Do you want to highlight the difference, either Georgie or Harry? Harry, I can see your hand is raised. Yeah, sure. I'm I'm happy to come in on this one. So the uh, more subtle distinctions between the two um, would we'd have to have a look at the different data sets, but we can certainly make that clearer um, in in the immediate future. Things that come to mind straight away is one that uh, for our for my challenge, it's um, education focused only so it's on that specific uh, sector policy sector uh, i imagine there'll be a different set of variables extracted so possibly some quite different variables across the two but we can make details of that av available and also the other one that may be worth pointing out is that for our challenge the unit of analysis is the publication rather than the contract themselves so what we have gathered even when i talk about those 307 contracts these are the 307 co contracts represented within the evidence and the information that we've got about them is the information that is available in the publications. So it's organized by publication and that's the unit at which the data is, is um, put into the spreadsheet. So that may be a difference as well. Thank you, Harry. It will be very interesting to compare the outcomes of, uh, of the two, the subset in George's um, visualization that uh, are about education. Is there anything you want to add, Georgi? Oh, uh, I do believe that the main difference are the, the database are different. So, and probably the, the columns, the specific top is different. And also what we can extract from both database will be different. So I do believe that uh, we will generate maybe some visualization will be similar, but there are different issues that we can address with these two different databases. So I think that these are the main difference in these two challenges. Wonderful. Thank you. Looking forward to our meeting on the 23rd of September to compare notes. James, I see your hand is raised. Yes, I just wanted to add as well that these are two different data sets which are looking at different things. And uh, just maybe to be clear about what the challenge will involve. So it's, well, um, if you are if you don't have technical skills to make a data dashboard, that, that shouldn't worry you. These, these are really thinking about um, what the data, what the data shows. Um, and we'll really be thinking about what questions people will be asking of this data, what insights people are looking for, uh, what they want to know, where the gaps are. So it's really sort of thinking about um, yeah, what people are looking for and, and what we're trying to get out of the data is a big part of the challenge. Thank you, James. Is there any other question? Okay. El, do you want to come in with your comments before I pass to Ozioma, who will explain to us how we join the Slack channel. L? Thanks. Um, no, I just wanted to make a note that I think it's really exciting to potentially connect up across the challenges. And so I think that's going to be a really important feature of our event in two weeks' time. Thanks. Fantastic. So I'll uh, hand over to Ozioma, who will help us in the practicalities on how you use Slack and how do you join a challenge. Ozioma.
Okay. Is it Is it better now? Can you hear me better now? Great. <laughs> okay, so like I was saying, um, I know that it's sounding a bit competitive, but please feel free to use any of the links for the any of the challenges and join the Slack and then see as you go along. Whenever you click any of the links, it should open you up to this bit as you see on the screen. And then it would ask you to sign in. If you don't have an account, if you're joining in from outside Oxford, which is most of us, you can continue with uh, Google or with Apple or with any accounts that you have. Can you please go to the next? And then you can search for, if, if you use the link, it should take you directly to it. But otherwise you can search for the team you wanna join either 24, 25, 26, 27, and then it will pop up and you join. It's, it's really easy like that. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We're using some old technology to swap microphone here. So those are the challenges. If you want to have a go, or if you have any question on how you join, I think it's as simple as clicking the link that is in the chat, which will also be emailed uh, to you. And uh, once there, you follow the instructions that uh, we were given, they will be in the video again, so you can revisit and you can always reach out to the Indigo team, uh, Ozioma, Juliana or Indigo. Can we put in uh, the right address in the chat if you encounter difficulties? I think uh, this is our hack and learn. I want to give you a chance to share your impression. Um, if you have other questions, or if you want to share expectation for this hack and learn. Uh, we are a very friendly community and it would be great if we could see everybody in the room instead of the slides, we don't have slides for now. I think it's really, you are manning the Zoom magic. Ah, I have a last announcement, which is uh, we are uh, tomorrow opening officially the social outcome conference. If you haven't registered yet, is something that is uh, really worth attending. It's a hybrid event. So you can uh, join as many sessions as you want or uh, as few as you want. And if you had to pick one session and only one, we think this one on the next slide is a session that is particularly relevant to the Indigo community because we're speaking about data with purpose and we are sharing experience from uh, um, practitioners who have been involved in outcome-based partnership and how data is, has been used and what is the data le legacy of these approaches. So this session is taking place on Friday at 11.45 UK time. But I'll stop here with the slide and uh, I want to hand the microphone to our community that is in the room now. If there are any questions, reflections, or if you have decided already which challenge you want to join, we would like to know which one and why. Mara, can I say something? Of course. I just want to say that uh, I've seen lots of people joining the Slack channel, but maybe they will find it a bit difficult to find the particular chat that they need to find. But there is a very easy way to do it. There is a search box on top of Slack, and you just need to, need to write a hack team and the number of your hack team. So remember that this time we are challenge number 24, the impact on spreadsheet, and then you have challenge 25, that's George's challenge on the OBC data set. 
uh, number 26 is Harry with the um, education projects, education outcomes projects. And then number 27 is Ishani with the platform to accelerate SIP design. So you just, you just write a hack team and the number and you will find it. Yeah, can uh, somebody, maybe Ozioma can uh, share her screen and do it for us live. So I'm going to try and shout, but if you can hear me, you just go up here once you've joined with the link and just type any of the hack teams you want to join. We don't see your screen. I don't see your screen. But we don't see my screen. I see black screen. No, I don't see you. Okay, I will. You're back. We could see it for a moment. <laughs> Let me try one more time. Can you see now? Yes. Excellent. So you just go to the top up here and search for whatever team you want to join. If you're not sure, just type, you will see all of the 24, 25, 26, and 27. It's showing this way because I already joined, but if you you don't have any, you can just join and then take a look and see what's happening in each of them and decide which you want to participate in. Wonderful. Thank you, Ozina. Is there any question from anybody or are we ready to hack and learn? Okay, wonderful. So we will send you an email with uh, the links to join the challenge, ways to reach us. And uh, please can I remind you to uh, invite colleagues or people you know might offer a contribution, a perspective to uh, create a great output from this uh, Hack and Learn. I will uh, certainly spy into every uh, challenge as I always do. I find them fascinating and we make always uh, long-term uh, friends and we hire people and go laugh from the Hack and Learn because uh, we find talents. So with no further ado, I'm handing back uh, a few minutes of uh, your time today. I just want to thank you for being with us today and I wish you a great hack and learn experience over the next two weeks. And I will see you at the conference or on the 23rd at the latest at our show and tell. Thanks, Maya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.